So welcome back. So uh, we continue with the last module, the module 6. In the first lecture what we have seen, we have discussed the biorefineries in general. We have also discussed the different types of biofuels, the first generation fuel and the second generation fuel and finally the third generation fuel which is the microalgae. There is another thing called as fourth generation fuels but right now we want not going into that. So we will concentrate primarily on the first, second and third generation biofuel. So we have also seen what is the plant look like. We have also given an example of a, such a commercial plant where we see the different processes carried out at pertinent areas of the plant. So today's lecture what we will do, we will see what are the processes involved, how does we get the desired product, so does the product, product in this case it is biofuel. Biofuel when I say it is primarily ethanol, sometimes it may also refer to butanol. So today's lecture will be given in description on the optical synthesis of sustainable biorefineries. So what we will do, we will introduce first the concept of this fuels, the biofuels. You can say it is a continuation of the previous lecture, then also the history of the biofuel production process, so where it started and then uh, synthesis of biofuel production process, what are the processes involved? The processes involved primarily we will concentrate on these three different biofuels, the corn based biofuels, then the lignocellulosic biofuels and finally the algae based biofuels. So the why I am concentrating on these three uh, domains of biofuels is that the corn based is a edible product. So we will see first initially this was developed because you have this biomass but it will compete with our food chain. So it is like we are using something which is a food to produce ethanol or butanol or biofuel. So then we go some improvement, we saw that okay fine, we do not want any food or edible seeds, can we do it with non-edible something that is called the lignocellulosic biofuels. So biomass other than those which are for food production, then this production came where you can confirm that we can produce this lignocellulosic, lignocellulosic material into cellulose and then cellulose you do a fermentation and you do some steps, processing steps you form ethanol. Then finally the algae based biofuels, now this algae based biofuels is very important uh, considering the current uh, status of energy, so what it does is it produces algae, so what algae does is algae only requires sunlight and carbon dioxide. So it will generate the algae and once the algae is generated then it becomes a lipid, lipids means it will have a fatty acid like structure. You can then do transesterification or if you want to do some gasification you convert them to biofuels. So microalgae only thing is uh, this the last part which is the algae based biofuels specifically microalgae, it requires large amount of nutrients and carbon dioxide. So these are very useful in sources where there are a source of carbon dioxide, okay. So let us go ahead, we see first the history of biofuel production process. So now as before in the previous lecture, we have seen a biorefinery is a facility that integrates the biomass conversion processes, the biomass conversion processes and equipment to produce fuels, materials and chemicals. So you convert biomass through several processes, you can either produce fuel, fuel you know it may be like something to you know you want to replace or petrol or diesel. So if you kindly if you note in many, many of the petrol pumps you say you will see that there is 10 percent blending, 20 percent blending. So 10 percent, 20 percent blending is nothing but the addition of this ethanol only, the bioethanol which is produced into the petroleum product. So that is the way it is blended. Then materials, materials uh, like uh, you can uh, sometimes what happens is if you conduct some process. Uh, let us say you do a pyrolysis, so pyrolysis is a process which is done in the absence of oxygen. If you do pyrolysis, what happens? The biomass will convert into a solid fraction which is the tar and then a gaseous fraction which you can condense and form syngas. The tar may be a useful product that is a useful material where you can produce the different aromatics like benzene, toluene, xylene. So those are the materials and chemicals and chemicals obviously uh, there are many such chemicals I can name some of them you know this is ethanol, butanol, you can have this ethanol, then butanol, then there are other many platform chemicals. Now platform chemicals are different because there you can find happens, what happens is you produce syngas from biomass 
and from there it depends upon what route you want to go ahead. If you want to produce some other chemicals, there are some chemicals which are having high value other than this fuel that is called HMF, then you can also form, it is actually 5 HMF and then you can also form levulinic acid, levulinic acid, okay. So these are platform chemicals, these are not produced in last amount but the primary production target is our ethanol and butanol and out of this ethanol is the uh, preferred one. So this we will take up in the next lecture, HMF and levulinic hexamethyl furfural. So what the design of biorefinery, it should depend on these factors, although we will not go into detail of designing parameters because it will require your conceptual knowledge of uh, process equipment design which you must be familiar with. So it is similar to a refinery, so it should be economically viable. So economically viable means the cost of the biomass and then the pretreatment cost. Then if you are going there are two, basically there are two ways you can convert this. One it may be thermochemical, another it is uh, biological means. Thermochemically you do a gasification and you convert it to syngas and then to products. While in uh, biological what you do is you ferment them, then you convert it to sugar and then sugar again you convert it to alcohol. So they should be energy efficient, it should not require a lot of cooling or heating facility and it should have minimum environmental impact that we have seen throughout this modules or other modules, previous modules that the amount of NOx and SOx or CO2 generated should be minimum. So biorefining overall is a process synthesis which involves the process to convert a set of inputs in the form of biomass and its conversion into valuable products and byproducts. So I have already discussed what are the valuable products and what are the byproducts. So the primary objective of any biorefinery is to find design with minimum cost or maximum profit. So it means like okay, I uh, am converting biomass to some useful product or byproduct. So there are number of you know your techniques available. You may go with biological, you may go with thermochemical. In that biological also you may go with different temperatures, with different enzymes and thermochemical you may go through different, let us say you want to have more of the hydrocarbon material or less of hydrocarbon material. Then you design a unit operation in such a manner that you convert most of the biomass into syngas or if you want hydrocarbons then you convert them into, uh, you use a different type of uh, indirect, we call, we call that indirect gasification. So in the indirect gasification you will consider and produce more of hydrocarbons. So you depend upon what you want. So now that is what we are discussing, that is the bioprocess versus chemical process. So bioprocess whether it is, if it is biological, whether that is financially viable or the chemical process, the thermochemical process which is financially viable. And then uh, there is alternative technology. For example, the technology you have the pretreatment. So pretreatment means what happens is if you take up any biomass, let us say you take a agricultural residue. Uh, so agricultural residue you must be aware of. This is the stubble which is a prevalent problem nowadays because of the pollution is caused because of its burning. So stubble if you collect it, you cannot use it directly. Uh, so there are some certain pretreatment methods. So what are these pretreatment methods? We will see that later. Essentially all these methods, what they will do, first is they will physically grind it into powders. After that, then this powder is fine but then uh, these has to have a large surface area. So that surface area even though it has increased but not all will be accessible not all will be accessible for biological because this biomass has this crystalline matter and crystalline matter is the cellulose. So cellulose is the crystalline matter from here only most of the sugar is formed. So hence to break this crystalline domain, you make it in contact with these processes. So as to break this or you can say to reduce the recalcitrance of this crystalline matter which is cellulose. Then uh, we also have to see the energy and water consumption and finally the waste production. So what are the producing, what are waste you are producing? Are you producing the, um, some sample which may be useful? Let us say if you are producing tar material then obviously you can apply some known method and convert it into some petroleum uh, chemicals such as uh, benzene, toluene, xylene. So you have to see all this. So this is the process, so biorefinery if you see, so it is always a negative carbon economy, so it means it just takes up carbon here 
So, and then uh, it once it goes, it will go to a, either it can produce a food product or non-food product. Then uh, it all becomes a carbon source. This carbon source, when produced in the, when subjected to certain processes, it can be converted to either chemicals, it can be converted to power, or it can be converted to fuels. This is the entire cycle of carbon dioxide. So, biofuels, let us briefly discuss about the history of biofuels. Biofuels has been linked to automobiles since 19th century. So, the first car, this is an interesting story, the first car produced on an assembly line, this is the Ford model, which was evident from 1908 to 1927, was developed with an adjustable carburetor, which makes it run on gasoline, ethanol or blend. So, you can see a long time back, almost close to 100 years, it was already available, the Ford Model T, where the blending was performed. In the next few years, the problem is it was going fine, but the next few years, the fossil fuels were available after the World War I. So, the crude based fuels actually then stopped this type of research. So, they displaced the use of biofuel and majority focus was then. So, because of the nitty, because the majority focus was actually shifted from renewable sources. Okay. So, that is what crude oil, because you know, if you have a crude oil refining, so you have number of products coming out. You have the lighter products, you have the middle distillate, then you have the heavier residue that is the waxes and asper and all these. So, these are useful for many other industries, not only fuels. But the problem is uh, increasing shortage of these energy resources that is the fossil fuel and high demand and dependency of this fossil fuel led the community to consider alternative and renewable energy sources. So, the focus is now currently is on developing alternative energy sources which is cheap, renewable or at least having neutral emission. So, this should be the three criteria, it should be cheap, it should be renewable and it should have neutral emission. Okay. So, for example, if you see uh, nowadays people are talking about the hydrogen. Hydrogen India is going towards the hydrogen economy. Hydrogen is also of three different types: that brown hydrogen, then green hydrogen, then blue hydrogen. So blue hydrogen is something which we know you get from the water splitting of water. Uh, sorry, for, uh, water splitting, while the green ones are you know from the fossil fuels and uh, sorry, not from the fossil fuel. It is from the renewable sources, and the brown ones are from the fossil fuels. So there we are focusing lot of focus because there is no carbon. So that's why hydrogen, if we have a neutral emission. Now, people are also working on liquid ammonia as the energy source because again liquid ammonia it is not having any carbon, so it will having a neutral emission we can say. So, biofuel uh, like we it is called agrofuel is any fuel whose energy is obtained through a process of biological carbon fixation. So, this means that the carbon uh, which is taken up from the atmosphere, it fixes within the biomass and you produce sugar and finally alcohol from this biomass so that is called biofuel. So, what is carbon fixation? It is a process that converts carbon dioxide into a hydrocarbon molecule that would be found in a living organism. Okay? So, carbon fixation is something which fixes the carbon. If this process occurs in a living organism, it is called as biological carbon fixation. Biofuels are also produced from biomass or bio waste which can be replenished year after year through sustainable farming practice. Now, you can grow this biomass or biofuel crops, though these crotch crops can be, well, if I discuss about corn, then corn is not a, it is edible, it is non edible. So, we can uh, use this, let us say stubble. So, after the crops, you take away or harvesting period is over. Uh, so, you have this leftover agriculture residue. So, that agriculture residue will always be there every year after year. So, you can take this and then you can process it into different components. So, that is one of the manner you can use it. So, it, it is called renewable. So, obviously, fossil fuels requires millions of years to form and they are not renewable. So, well, we have to move somehow to this direction, but then still amount of biomass or biofuel contribution is very less in a country like India. So, that is why this hydrogen economy, India is moving towards the hydrogen economy. Let us see now what is biomass. Biomass is a dead organic matter, examples of kernels of corn, the mats of algae or the stalks of sugar cane. Stalks of sugar cane means the which is left over after the sugar cane processing. So, there are, let us discuss the types of biomass. You have the types of biomass as woody 
uh, for example, you have coconut, oil palm, poplar, pine. These are all uh, woody, so it has lot of cellulose in it. Then you have this, generally they are burnt to heat space or heat water or to produce steam to generate electricity via turbine generator. So, if you want to generate power, you just burn it, you burn it, you generate steam and from the steam you generate turbine and you get the power or if it is used directly, it is called as direct biomass. So, if you use directly this biomass for producing chemicals or ethanol, it is called direct biomass. Then there may be non-woody, for example, like corn, sugarcane, soya beans, algae. They are generally processed to produce different liquid biofuels. So, these are called as indirect biomass. Okay. So, there is two types of biomass, you have the woody and the non-woody. So, what are the different production methods? The biomass energy can be converted into liquid biofuels into generally two methods. Method 1, first method, what it does is the sugar crops or starch are grown and then through the process of fermentation, ethanol is produced. This is the first method. Or the second method, plants are grown which naturally produce oil such as jetropa and algae. So now algae means, uh, you know, what, how do they form algae? You require uh, the nutrients, you require sunlight and require lot of carbon dioxide, you form algae. Now algae, uh, obviously nutrients means I am talking about the fertilizer, you require fertilizer. So, sometimes it may say that okay, we are forming algae, but then again we are using fertilizer and fertilizer uses lot of carbon. So, where are the, so that is a lot of research is going on if, if they can be grown without these nutrients. So, because and another part, part is it require lot of CO2. This algae what they do is they will grow and they will sometimes of concentration which is close to uh, lipids and then the lipids is a fatty acid, you can then easily do a transesterification to provide provide fuels. So, overall some processes are there, you can provide fuels or specifically biodiesel. This is exactly what I have written, this oil is further treated to produce biodiesel which can be used for various purposes. So, these are the two methods. So, the issue is both this method can have two different domain, it can either go through biological means or it can also go through the thermochemical means, okay. But overall most of the processes based on the biomass lie either method 1 or method 2. So this we have already discussed the history of the biofuels, it has been linked to the automobiles in 19th century and the first car was again produced by the Ford model. So we have seen this that the crude foil, crude based fuels displaces the use of biofuels for decades and majority focus was on renewable resources from wood and biomass. And I have seen just before, I just make a summary of this, what we have learned so far. Increasing shortage of energy resources and high demand and dependency on fossil fuel has led the community to consider alternative and renewable energy source. Overall, we should keep in mind the focus is on developing alternative energy sources which are cheap, renewable or with at least neutral emission. So, only biomass can provide an alternative for short term energy goals, especially for transportation sector because of the needs of high density energy. Now, when I talk of short term energy goals, it means biomass cannot in totality replace the fossil fuel. So, if I want to write here, you can have the fossil fuels. So, fossil fuels like petrol, diesel or oil if I write down oil or it can be coal. Now, biomass, biomass may lessen this, it cannot be nowadays uh, directly as a power source because the amount of uh, oil and coal, it is still produced to a large extent and we have still not found out enough technology to economically convert it into power. So, it that is why this blending came into the picture, 10 percent blending, 20 percent building. Why? Because the petrol and this ethanol produced have similar calorific value. Huh? So, that is what and we have studied in the previous module that this also reduce, helps in the, you know, in the combustion. So, where amount of gases produced will be less because we have ethanol, part of ethanol into it. But then there is fossil fuel, then there is nuclear power. 
the nuclear power is not a uh, scope of this particular topic, but I think it has got a lot of attention. The nuclear power, this is replaced, this can be replaced, so it can be either or or. So, either we go this direction or this direction. If you consider nuclear power, almost 90 percent of the power of power produced is by nuclear power in France. Okay. So, if you, are, you usually want to replace oil and coal altogether, then you go for nuclear or you use oil and coal. But in our country like India, we also use other sources like natural gas. So, we have kept different baskets. We have LNG, liquefied natural gas, then you have compressed natural gas, then we have this fossil fuels and well, we have this biomass. Okay. But uh, some of the countries like France and there are other countries which I use a lot of it power is based on the our nuclear power. So, in our country we only have, I'm, if I am correct, in our only 5 percent of power is produced by nuclear power in India. So, this nuclear power is also very clean, only issue is the disposal of the radioactive waste. Anyway, so move ahead. So, what it is, so that is what I want to make it as a short term energy gain. The bioethanol and biodiesel have potential to become the most promising alternative. Today's biorefined technology is based on the utilization of the whole plant or integration of traditional and modern processes for utilizing biological raw materials. So, this is the overall schematic. So, now you see these are the different raw materials. You have grain, we have lignocellulosic material, we have microalgae or we have waste oil. This comes primarily from petroleum. So, now see these are the different techniques. Okay, You, you can say these are the this part from the pretreatment methods. Pri not all are pretreatment methods, but some of them. For example, so gasification or pyrolysis. So, this pretreatment I have already written here. So, I may not write here because otherwise it will be confusing. So, pretreatment methods I will uh, talk about later on. So, important is after this pretreatment is over. See, there is a process called hydrolysis and fermentation. You do a hydrolysis and fermentation on the woody grain material, you form ethanol. So, what happens is you take away lignin from it because any of the plant material has three components as you know, cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. So, you have to remove the lignin which is insoluble material. So, you can take out cellulose, you can take out hemicellulose. So, hemicellulose and cellulose are similar in nature on this the only difference being cellulose material is crystalline. So, then from this cellulose you form sugar, simple sugar and from simple sugar you convert them, ferment them to form ethanol. Then you may have gasification, you produce directly by providing gasification means steam reforming or partial oxidation, you produce syngas, I have taught this in module 2, produce syngas and then you know the water gas shift reaction, you produce carbon dioxide, hydrogen or you may from syngas you can separate out carbon dioxide or you can take the syngas you do a catalysis this is called a fischer tropsch process Cat or simple catalysis you can produce methanol, ethanol or you fischer tropsch process means where you I have already start make you learn this. So, carbon plus carbon monoxide and hydrogen is produced to form different hydrocarbons. Okay. It may be alkanes, it could be alkyne, alkenes. So, it may produce the uh, polyaromatic compounds or gasoline compounds or fischer tropsch diesel or you can simply digest it in a digester. You can have the microalgae as a source, you digest in digester to provide biogas or you do a oil extraction if, because there is lipids in it, you do a oil esterification. So, get lipids, lipids are fatty acids, you do a trans esterification reaction, you can get biodiesel and glycerol or you can take this also from the waste oil. So, these are the different raw materials, the technologies and the biofuels produced. Okay. Let us see the first, the corn based biofuels. Corn is a popular feedstock for ethanol production around the globe, ethanol production due to its abundance and relative ease of conversion to ethanol. It makes a good biofuel feedstock due to its starch content. It has a high level of starch content means it has a high level of cellulose. So, it is easy to convert it to ethanol. USA is the world leading producer of corn and ethanol made from corn obviously. As of 2012, more than 40 percent of USA corn crop was being used to produce corn based ethanol. So, what are the benefits? Existing infrastructure for planting, harvesting and processing corn is already there. 
cornstarch to ethanol conversion is simple, no indirect land use cost, but the, on the downside it has low ethanol yield per acre of corn produced, it requires large amounts of pesticides and fertilizers, it also contaminates the soil and water and it is expensive. Okay. So, that was where it started for corn based biofuels. So, what is the method for corn based biofuels? What you do is that you do a grinding, you form corn grits, then these two processes the liquefaction and the sacrification, what you do you add enzyme, you add enzyme in both the steps along with steam and converted them to a wet slurry. or you produce them into sugars, wet slurry means it is a mixture of sugar and water. Now this sugar and water is sent to a fermentation unit. Now if you have simple sugars, let us say glucose, xylose, you do a fermentation. If you do a fermentation, carbon dioxide is one of the product and again you add some sort of yeast. So this is a preparation for the fermented, so you have the enzyme preparation here happening in the inoculation tank send it to a fermentation, you add yeast again here. Then what you do, you convert the simple sugars to beer. So, beer is having less than 20 percent of ethanol. So, you have a water and ethanol mixture in the liquid phase and a solid residue coming due to the fermentation. What you do, you strip it, you strip the liquid part and uh, if you strip the liquid part, the ethanol and water composition will be close to 60 to 70 percent. Then you do a rectification. So, the problem is this ethanol water makes a azeotrope. Now, when you do a rectification, this azeotrope, so what you do, more of the water is desired product, the water comes out in the bottom and the top product is ethanol. So, ethanol may not be removed in, com in totality, there will be some water remaining, there are further research carrying out how to separate ethanol and water. So, you can add a entrainer to it for distillation setup to recover the ethanol and water. So, this entrainer you know what is that, that is azeotropic distillation method you can use. Then finally, what you do, you, you have the azeotropic distillation carried out here, you use the molecular sieves, you use some adsorbents, you dry out the water. One other way is dry out the water. If you are not able to do azeotropic distillation, you get anhydrous or dry ethanol. So, this is called the dry grind process. Now, what do we do with the solid material? After stripping, you send the solid, separate the liquid and the, so this is the liquid part this is the solid part, you send the solid to centrifugation. If you do a solid to centrifugation, what happens is there are two components of solid. One is the dry distillate grains. So, this is DDG means dry distillate grains. So, this dry distillate grains may be a cattle feed. So, they are sent to the market. The remaining the top product which is the precipitate comes out is a soluble proteins. So, these proteins are very useful, they are used for further processing. So, you see from grinding you are getting a ethanol, then dry distillate grains and as well as some soluble proteins. So, this is the first initial process which was formulated which is the dry grind process. So, this is the process which I just want to discuss, just now discuss the corn kernels are used as feed, first washed and then ground. The resulting ground corn undergoes cooking and liquefaction to produce corn slurry. The slurry is enzymatically sacrificed to produce glucose and fed to the fermenter. So, this is glucose is simple sugar where ethanol is produced from glucose. After the fermentation, stripping column known as the beer column which separates the solids and water from ethanol water mixture. So, overhead of the beer column will have 60 to 70 percent ethanol and it is further rectified in a distillation tower to obtain an azeotropic mixture of ethanol and water. This azeotrope as I just now said before is allowed to pass over a molecular sieve made of zeolite. So, now you just absorb the water, you get only anhydrous ethanol as the product. Now the wet particles from the beer column, the solid particles are centrifuged to separate them from liquid and the wet centrifuge solids are dried with proteins acquired by evaporating centrifuge water. Okay. Moving ahead. Now, second generation is the one which is formed from the cellulosic ethanol. So, the, the second generation fuels that is the 2007 energy build placed cap on the corn ethanol because you are using the arable land for producing corn. So, you may fall short on the food production. So, that is to close this gap, alternative were required. 
So what they thought, there are massive amount of feedstock which is available, which are the crop residue. In our case, it is the stubble, the agricultural residue, forest residue and some dedicated energy crops such as Jatropa, okay. So why it all came about, just now I said, this is because of the fuel versus food composition. The cellulosic ethanol does not affect the food market, while the starch market does affect the food market. So that is why this cellulosic ethanol came into prominence. Overall, it had a larger net energy gain and it has less negative environmental impact. See the greenhouse gases reduction for corn ethanol is was, was just 21.8 percent as compared to cellulose ethanol which is stands to be 91 percent. So, it has less environmental impact when you use cellulose or the forest residue agricultural waste as the source of fuel. So, let us see what do you mean by the different components. As you know, the lignocellulose comprises of cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Cellulose is a polysaccharide consisting of a linear chain of several hundred to over 10,000 beta 1,4 linked glucose units. Compared to starch, cellulose is much more crystalline, making it harder. So, if it is crystalline, it makes it harder for the enzymes and chemicals to access cellulose. So, crystalline material is not easy to react. So, it, feels, it poses a resistance for any reaction. So, you want to break this, you want to convert this crystalline matter to amorphous. So, that is what the process is all about. The structural, comp because these all form, the cellulose forms the structural component of the cell wall. It is the most common organic compound on earth. So for example, wood is 40 to 50 percent cellulose. Our, we as humans, we do not process the enzyme cellulose to hydrolyze cellulose. Now, let us see the structure of cellulose. So, this is the structure of cellulose. You see it has a cellulose chain and the intra and intramolecular hydrogen bonds present in the cellulose. So, if you see this is the cellulose chain. If you want to see a chain of it, this is the chain looks like the beta 1, 4 linkages are there. So, this is CH2OH. You have this OH groups and they are linked together. This is a 5 membered ring. And then uh, you, all, you can also have this intramolecular. So, this is the intramolecular, so OH hydrogen bonding. So, the, because of this, it gives a crystalline structure, okay. So, N is the, this is the monomer, so N is the chain length. So, these are the intramolecular hydrogen bonds. So, these are because of the beta 1, 4 linkages. Now, hemicellulose, a hemicellulose, what is it? It is a polysaccharide derived from cigars. It consists of glucose, xylose, mannose, galactose, ramanose and arabinose. It comprises of 20 percent of the biomass and it consists of shorter chains around 200 sugar units. As compared to cellulose, it has shorter chains and it is not crystalline. So, when you use any pretreatment method, this is the first component to be separated out. Then the next is the cellulosic part. So, cellulosic part is only, it cannot separate out, you can convert it to amorphous. And hemicellulose, you can separate it out, okay. The structure of hemicellulose is branched. So, it is similar structure, but it is only, so you are seeing this is a branching going here, one of the branches going here. You have again similar groups attached to it and is, N is the chain length, okay. Now, the last component is your lignin. So, lignin are cross-linked macromolecular substance consisting of phenylpropane units bound by ether and carbon-carbon bonds. So, I am not able to show the entire structure in totality because it is very difficult to draw such a structure, but we can show the oligomers or monomers of such. It is the second most abundant natural polymer. It allows for water and nutrient transport as well as structural part. It gives a structure to the plant. It blocks cellulose as well as other bacteria and yeast to reach cellulose. So, one has to, uh, so you have to, because problem is this lignin is also another problematic area. The lignin also like cellulose which is crystalline, it only allows the water and nutrient pa to pass through. It does not, it blocks the cellulose and other bacteria to reach cellulose. So, one way you have the crystalline nature of cellulose, another problem is lignin which is blocking the cellulose to reach to the crystalline matter. So, that is it offers protection because if the this bacteria reach the cellulose then it will just die. So, lignin also is that is the most important part. So, it cannot be removed much easily. It can be only be separated as a solid material. So, lignin structure is something like this, okay. So, ether bond is there, carbon-carbon bonds are there, see this carbon-carbon ether bonds all are there. 
Okay. So, these are different components of lignin, paracarmaryl alcohol, sinapyl alcohol, coniferyl alcohol, these are different chemical structure of lignin. So, to produce cellulosic ethanol, the lignin and hemicellulose must be separated from the cellulose so that the cellulose enzyme can hydrolyze the cellulose creating glucose units. These glucose units are then fermented to produce ethanol. So, your pathway is separate out, you separate out hemicellulose first and lignin in the solid material, then whatever remaining is only cellulose, then you remove the cellulose crystallinated and change it to amorphous. So, what are the different ways to make such a process work? It can be either a biochemical method where it is created through steps such as pretreatment, enzymatic saccharification and fermentation or you may have a thermochemical process by gasification, syngas on the fissure troughs. This is exactly the same way the FT synthesis which I discussed in the previous module. Okay. If you have syngas produced from this biomass, then you use the same technique, use the same technique to form different alcohols, aldehyde, all these things. Okay. So, then it process is same, either you use a thermochemical or you use biochemical. In the biochemical, you only produce biofuel primarily. So, what are the pretreatment steps which you have? It is a step that separates the cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. It prepares the cellulose for hydrolysis. It is a very important step because it will influence the following processes which we will discuss and it should be economical. The objective for pretreatment is to remove the recalcitrants of lignocellulose. This allows the enzymes and chemicals to have access to cellulose. Okay. So, how do we remove the recalcitrants or the or its resistance to this reaction, you have to separate the lignin and hemicellulose this is the first thing. Then you pre-hydrolyze some of the cellulose, you convert cellulose to glucose. Obviously, in this process you destroy the crystalline structure of cellulose and then you reduce the size of the feedstock. So, obviously, you are reducing the phyla feedstock. So, if it that is, if you take 1 kg of biomass, you may be able to produce just 30 percent or 300 ml of ethanol, theoretical yield I am talking about. Okay. That is what you have to do, you have to, we are reducing the size of the feedstock. So, it is not like that the hemicellulose and the, this lignin we are throwing away, that has further you can process it to hemicellulose can be processed further to produce again sugar and then the lignin cannot be produced to form sugar, it, but it may produce other compounds such as benzene toluene or xylene or the aromatic products. So, this overall I can say this is if this is your uh, plant material. So, you have the lignin, the plant wall, the cellulose and the hemicellulose intertwined in between. So, this is the amorphous region. So, and this is the crystalline region. So, when you do a pretreatment, this actually breaks, the wall breaks, it does not dissolve, but it breaks and you can also see these cellulose component breaks and it breaks into small, small units which are called cellulose sugars and those which are here red ones, these are called hemicellulose sugars. So, both can be converted to alcohol, the lignin cannot be. So, then you need a suitable separation mechanism. So, methods, there are many different, different types of pretreatments to prepare for ethanol production. The pretreatment methods are physical, chemical and biological. Some of the well known pretreatment methods are dilute acid, the steam explosion or the spoil that is the sulphide pretreatment to overcome recalcitrants of lignocellulose. The organosol treatment which solubilizes the lignin and hemicellulose, the ozone pretreatment and the ammonia fiber explosion. Ammonia fiber explosion means you send the ammonia at high pressure, you explode it and then you form a gaseous part and a solid part. And some of the well known industrial processes are gasification, hydrolysis and the fissure troughs these are process. Okay. So, these are the well known treatment methods. So, all these methods what they will do? They will try to reduce the crystallinity of cellulose or they will try to alter the polarity. So, if you alter the polarity, the, amorph the amorphosity will increase. So, all these methods are used so as to separate out the cellulosic component. Okay. So, this is the gasification process. As I told you, you use any pretreatment method, you grind it send for gasification and steam reforming. In this what happens is you if you send for gasification finally, what you are doing is you are getting CO plus H2. Okay. And then you do a filtration because you have the while you do a gasification you may form different 
uh, amounts that is ammonia, okay, then CO2 and other soluble so and other solids. You, you want to do a filtration, then you do what you do is you separate the hydrocarbons if they are produced at these conditions. And then what you need to do is to you change, you need to change the CO2 H2 ratio, manipulate the CO2 H2 ratio. For this you have this PSA process, this PSA process you can alter the ratio of carbon monoxide to hydrogen because all the biomass is here is converted to CO and H2. So you need to have a certain ratio as I have told you in this fischer trupps process to uh, generate ethanol. Then what you do is the removal of the sour gases. Sour gases means you do a PSA process, you remove carbon dioxide and then the amine based process to remove uh, the remaining carbon dioxide and the H2S. So you remain mainly it is H2S and hydrogen sulphide because of the biomass may have some sulphur process, sulphur in it and the CO2, both are removed. Finally you have this MEA, after this methyl ethyl monoalkyl amine is treated you get pure CO plus H2. This CO plus H2 because uh, you know this catalytic process, you do a catalytic process upon this CO and H2 because we have removed all other gases because if these gases are present, it may deactivate the catalyst. At this condition, you convert it to direct distillation to ethanol. This is the simple gasification process. The fischer trupps diesel also produces in a similar manner. You have the pretreatment, then you have the indirect gasification. You have steam reforming, so in this process you have this CO plus H2 getting formed, okay. You scrub out, you remove the solid material here, then you remove the hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, then remove the sour gases, you remove CO2 and remove H2S in these processes, then send it to catalytic unit where it is free of any other gases except for CO and H2 which is the ratio of 1.4. Then you do a distillation, in distillation you there will be flue gas which you obviously have to remove and then with the distillation you can get the fischer trupps diesel and the products, long chain products where you do a hydro cracking, make it into a smaller chain and then again send it back to the distillation unit. So you need to, because hydro cracking is required because you have a solid uh, material which is heavier and which is primarily waxes, you need to break them as I taught you, it is if you want to break them, you test to be again a catalytic process and you send it to distillation and until you produce, keep on producing fischer trupps diesel. So, this is the way you produce fischer trupps diesel. So, when I write an indirect gasification, it means it can in, we are using both steam as well as oxygen, okay. In this process, we are using autothermal, it can be autothermal that I am not discussing in detail. It can use either the use of steam and oxygen, okay, and both endothermic and exothermic reactions are happening. Then this is the hydrolysis, this is the biochemical method. This biological method, is suppose is the pretreatment, I grind it here, then I add so acid, so here the crystallinity is reduced, crystalline material goes to amorphous material, okay. So you have a solid handling, solid part and you have a liquid part. So liquids, whichever is acid, it neutralized by, it is neutralized by some base and you have formed the gypsum here, you take it out, this is the co-product, gypsum is used in various. Then what you do, the solids which you have is the amorphous one, you do a hydrolysis, okay, you do a enzymatic hydrolysis, then do a fermentation then you produce ethanol here. This is a mixture of ethanol plus water. So whatever the solid produce, produce after fermentation that is lignin, you separate out the lignin, okay, separate out the lignin. So you have the lignin and also some part of hemicellulose also will be coming out from the lignin that I am not discussing, primarily it will be lignin because these are solids. So whatever you have you are converting this hydrolysis, what you are doing is you are converting the into sugar, sugars, simple sugars, preparing it for fermentation. The simple sugars are then converted in a fermenter to ethanol. Then you separate out the solid, send to a beer column, then it is the exactly the same manner what you do. You just uh, take out the molecular sieves and you absorb the water, you get pure fuel ethanol. The beer column is similar to what I have just dis discussed a few slides back. So it's just a column, distillation column where the overhead product is ethanol and the bottom product is water. This is the hydrolysis based ethanol production from switchgrass. 
So if you see this is the process, so in the conventional process, this is the biomass feed stack, you do a pretreatment with the sulfuric acid, so what cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, cellulose and lignin comes out here in the top hemicellulose gets dissolved, you take out hemicellulose, then you do a enzymatic hydrolysis, you use the enzyme cellulase and then convert it to fermentable sugar. This fermentable sugar then you can convert to ethanol. This is the way you do it. So this is another organosolvic method where instead of dilute acid I have used another solvent which is ionic liquid. So this does not have any harsh conditions. So you do a dissolution the same manner the both hemicellulose lignin here drops down you have only cellulose. So separation process steps are reduced. So you regenerate the biomass, the salinity is reduced and then you apply the same method. So difference between this solvent and this acid is the harsher condition in the acid. Another is the both hemicellulose lignin is coming out as a solid cellulose but in this case only the hemicellulose is coming out as a solid because cellulose and lignin is joined together that is the difference. Now the final part of my talk is the algae based biofuels. The potential of algae based biofuels is a third generation fuel came into prominence because no feedstock can match algae in terms of quality or diversity. Algae produces an oil that can easily be refined to diesel or even certain components of gasoline. Algae can be genetically manipulated to produce everything from ethanol and butanol to even gasoline and diesel fuel. Butanol is interesting because it resembles gasoline. So algae is lipids and lipids you convert it to any fuel like ethanol, butanol. It is virtually identical energy density to gasoline and improves emission. Until the advent of genetically modified algae, scientists had a great deal of difficulty producing butanol. So but this outstanding yields is one of the feature which is associated with algae. Algae have been used to produce up to 9000 gallons of biofuels per acre which is tenfold what the best traditional feedstock has been able to generate. People who work closely with algae have suggested that yields as high as 20,000 gallons per acre are attainable. According to the US Department of Energy, yields which are more than 10 times higher than the second generation biofuels, only 0.42% of the US land area is needed. So if you see 10 times more yield and a land is less than 1%. So these are the two greatest advantage if you talk about economically. So what are the techniques for cultivating? So you need to cultivate, you want to produce algae. How do you produce algae? The algae can be produced either in open ponds, closed loop systems or photobioreactors. In open ponds, it is a simple design, it does not have and has a low capital cost, it is grown in a open air. It means you have these lakes where you see algae sometimes they are formed. You do not need any investment but it is less efficient because the other organisms can contaminate the pond and damage the, or it can kill the algae because you do not have any control over the other organism, it can easily kill the algae. So the growth is not that high, the yield is not high in the simple systems. Closed loop systems is similar to open ponds but not exposed to atmosphere. Here you use a sterile source of carbon dioxide, it could potentially be directly connected to the carbon dioxide source. So if you have a carbon dioxide source nearby such as smokestacks, you can use the gas you release it into the instead of atmosphere you release it into this closed loop system because CO2 it requires, it requires both CO2 and sunlight to produce microalgae. Photobioreactor, then the third is the photobioreactor, it is complex, expensive, closed system but we have significantly higher yield and better control. Well, the challenges of algae are it requires large amount of water, nitrogen and phosphorus to grow. The production, if you, it requires nitrogen and phosphorus, so it means you require lot of fertilizer to meet algae's biofuel. So it is having higher greenhouse because if you require higher amount of fertilizer and even though I have not covered the fertilizer in this class, it means that uh, you require this production of fertilizer which again will generate carbon. So it means it is um, having higher greenhouse emission than algae based biodiesel. It also means the cost of algae based fuel is much higher than fuel from other sources. Currently the net energy invested into producing biofuel using algae is greater than the amount of energy that can be extracted from the fuel. The single disadvantage means large scale algae biofuel production will not happen soon if at all. The disadvantage is one which is the net energy, the investment of energy is greater than the amount of energy. So amount of energy you are producing is less than energy, uh, an amount of energy is required. 
ExxonMobil has started 600 million dollars on this algae research and development in 2013 and concluded that algae based biofuel will not be practical for at least the next 25 years. So, you need better technological tools to make it economically viable. In addition, the computation is purely economic and it does not account for the unresolved environmental implication. Okay? So, this is what the biggest disadvantage, the energy investors is huge. Okay? Some of the final uh, challenges is uh, what are the challenges? The minor drawback regarding algae is that the biofuel produced from them tends to be less stable than the biodiesel, biodiesel produced from other sources. This is because the oil found in algae tends to be highly unsaturated. So, if it is unsaturated, it is more prone to any reaction. Unsaturation oils thus are more volatile at high temperature and thus more prone to degradation. Unlike the fertilizer requirement above, this is the problem. So, there are two things which are taking into it as more energy. Fertilizer, it requires fertilizer in the form of nutrients because it is a plant, it needs fertilizer and it also unsaturated fuel. These are the major drawbacks. Huh? So, people are working on it, so it is not stable. So, this is not stable as a fuel, the products are not stable as a fuel. So, this is where we stop here and finally, we have discussed the all different fuels. So, I will suggest you go through this set of articles by Grossman, the first three articles by Grossman which discusses the all the processes and then this is the book where it has been compiled, the authors have compiled their results. Please go through these first three articles. Thank you. Thank you.